Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm okay. Really yeah. well? Yeah, been a long day. I'm just sitting here relaxing with my little glass of my favorite Rioja. <laughs> okay. Do you have a, a favorite yeah. uh, Rioja in Spain, Nick? Yes, Itadi. Which one? It's priced Itadi. Itadi, okay. Yes, it's priced at about, on average, sort of eight euros, 50. Um, it's a Criantha, which is my favorite type. Uh, I think it's just great value. Yeah. How do you so, rate uh, Spanish wines compared to the the French, the Australian, the South African, the the US? Well, I've never been a, f a major fan of French wine because I think they try to be too clever with it. Okay, uh, it's this mentality of trying to be as sophisticated as possible. South African wines I enjoy. Uh, Argentinian wines, yes. Um, North American, some of them. There's a, there's a couple of wines down in Australia. Obviously, the uh, Hardy, Tom, uh, Harvey, Tom, uh, Hardy, whatever Hardy, it's called down in Hardy, Hardy's is the brand. Yeah, yeah, Hardy's is the one, the famous one from Australia. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, South African, Argentinian, I really do. But I love the Spanish wines, I have to be honest. But, and both of the main main ones by the way the riojas and the ribetas oh, okay. yes well I, I think that when you're in spain spanish wine is the drop you need to drink right because i, I find that australian wines don't travel well here that's just my opinion yeah. you know but uh you know and you can't get such a, a wide array of wines here if you go just at the supermarket you know there's hundreds of different types yeah i i, I mean i i enjoyed try, I, I tried an, another one out actually just the other day um i like to experiment uh and to be honest i enjoy supporting the spanish economy in that respect i, I would far rather spend my money on spanish wines um to be honest than than the others now, let's get into the conversation, Nick. We spoke last yeah. week, as uh, everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. uh, bit of a bit of a controversial video for a Ooh, few things yes. that were said. Yeah, I think we should never speak speak of, again about COVID in terms of masks, vaccines, anything we like won't. that. We anything won't. controversial, we stay away from. We and won't. I shall not talk about my personal relationships <laughs> because okay. I had it, all those words, creepy, pervert, oh, it was all coming out. Talk about yeah. personal attacks. A lot of nasty Still, and a lot of yeah. nasty and hateful comments there, Nick. Unfortunately, yeah. it's it uh, can become a bit of a, um, a cesspit if you like the comment section from time to time, which is a shame. Okay. But, I've never uh, experienced that before. No, uh, it was quite a shock, an eye opener. Um, you know, in terms of the supermarket thing with my story of the, you know, I was trying to make light of a situation, yeah. and it completely backfired on me. Um, Still, well, lesson it, learned. It, it, it was an yeah. anecdote that uh, yeah. that uh, unfortunately, as we know, not everybody sees the funny side of stories, no. Nick. And Touched and in nerves. and in today's uh, society, you have to be careful what you say. Unfortunately, yes. Um, yes. but it is what it is. So we're going to avoid yeah. those topics now. <laughs> people people were interested, however, and I'm just going to say that the video was in general positive because there was a clear majority of of uh thumbs up than they were thumbs down yeah i think Even once though, people got past the the first exactly. five or seven minutes <laughs> and they were still looking <laughs> exactly just <laughs> in the same changed. way that people are going to criticize our conversation about wine today nick but that's another yes. story uh house developments nick you yes. said last week that you were uh in the middle of a a house buying process here in spain yes yeah, so I'd, I'd seen the... there's been some development sorry yeah sorry um so I'd seen the place last week, you're right, and I had made an offer, uh, and then it was accepted the following day. So where we are now is, um, it's been quite interesting actually, because um, the seller has a solicitor, and it is the solicitor who is right in the process of writing up the private contract. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, the contract has been going backwards and forwards from the solicitor to the agent who I've been working with, who, by the way, also happens to be uh, uh, legally qualified. So you've got a situation here where the solicitor of the seller obviously is acting on her behalf, yep. 
quite rightly so. Meanwhile, the agent is acting on my behalf. Okay. So both sides are obviously trying to protect the interests of their clients, which is, is, is fine. But it's quite mm -hmm. interesting to see the back and forth. Um, it's been going on now for, what, three days, this contract? Yep. Um, and my agent, uh, Sandra, she said today that, yeah, she's just got a few more changes to make. So as it stands, I will be visiting the office of the seller's solicitor on Friday at one o'clock to sign this private contract. It's, it's known also in Spanish, by the way, as the Aras. Apparently, okay, that's the right, name good, for good, it. Good. Okay. All right. Um, so, yes. Now, at that point, then, I should be handing over um, ten percent of the purchase price. So I've 10%, got to hand over ten percent directly. Yes, I'll be paying that ten percent directly to the seller. Okay. Um, so sixteen and a half thousand. I do as an immediate transfer, job okay. done. So um, uh, ten percent deposit, sixteen and a half grand. Yes. So um, in the meantime, uh, I think I did mention it last week. I've got the two avenues for the mortgage that I'm pursuing. One is Kaiser Bank, who is my bank, who already have given me a pre-approval. Okay. So as soon as I have the private contract, potentially I could go and see them and start the formalization of the, the mortgage process. Meanwhile, of course, I've also got this broker. Oh, oh by the way, the, the, the mortgage from Kaiser Bank is the standard 20% deposit, 80% mortgage. This broker, though, that also I've been dealing with, um, it's quite interesting because I've been throwing a lot of paperwork. She sent out the, the request to a whole variety of different financial institutions. And we've ended up with one in particular who, on the face of it, seemed to be quite acceptable to the idea of an 85% mortgage with a 15% deposit. Albeit, apparently, the way things go here in Spain is as soon as you change from 80% to something higher, then they have to implement a, a further risk assessment checks okay. on processes. But so far, it seems to be going well. Mm. So... Tomorrow evening, apparently, is when I'm going to get the response. Okay, now how is that going to benefit me? Well, okay, clearly, if I'm only paying 15% deposit versus 20% on 165 grand, effectively, 8,250 8, is going to be extra in my pocket. Okay, albeit I do have to pay the broker. Okay, broker. Yep. now that broker is probably going to cost about four grand. Okay. But obviously, where the broker really works for me is the interest rates. Because the broker feeds a lot of business to this particular bank, um, she gets good deals. Okay. Better, anything bet, it's, it's better than anything I could possibly get okay. on my own. Good, 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 good. So the long-term payback for me could be really, really good. Okay? Yeah. So, now, the, now, the place mm. you, you're looking at, Nick, you said it's mm. a golf course somewhere down there. Um, walk in no renovations needed or you've got to paint the place or what's the story none of that nothing no the lady in question who the the owner unfortunately she's got some issues with her eyes um and she's having to give up her life here <clears throat> in okay. spain which is really sad she's 80 years old um it's a struggle so she's having to move back to the uk and effectively go back to her family Oh. And the way we constructed the deal was that all of the big furniture, so the beds, the sofas, the dining set, the, the table and chairs, all of the big stuff, cabinets, yeah. wardrobes, you name all of that stuff, and the whole kitchen, by the way, the entire kitchen, is staying. I mean, oh, literally, really? it's a case of, oh, yes. I mean, it's almost all I, all I have to do is pack my suitcase and I'm in. Wow. It's that kind of setup. Um not only that, but the way I did the deal with her was, for those people that, that mentioned I was a very stupid man in the, your last video, I, <laughs> she has a car, and she's faced with selling the car, okay? So I asked her about the car, what it was, and it's actually a Seat Ibiza. Okay. Now, it's 17 years old, but crucially, it's only got 54,000 kilometers on the clock. Is it diesel or petrol? Petrol, okay? okay. all right. Um, but I thought to myself, because... Because of where it is, I would be forced to buy a car. 
But I managed to get the deal done. So effectively, we ended up agreeing on me giving her the asking price, but with her including the car. Okay, so you haven't got a car at the moment, Nick. Correct. I just haven't needed one. So that's, again, another reason for the Padron, that oh, I didn't do okay, it because okay, right, I've okay. just never needed a car, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, we're not going go to we're not gonna no. go into that too much either. <laughs> no, but no, no. But, uh, <laughs> but basically, to, to sum the story up, you're, you're, it's basically yours now, the, the flat, you think, right? Friday, 10% deposit, Correct. mortgage, mortgage organised, just the question of allowing the, the lady to – to uh, get her stuff together and move back to the UK, and then away well, you go. Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a settlement date, so this oh, is the okay. next thing that's of interest to your viewers. Yeah. So we're agreeing on a settlement date of the third to the fifth of December, and um, what will happen at that point is that we will go to the notary office in mm -hmm. Fuencarola, yeah. and we will sign the documents, title deeds, etc., handed over. Um, and then what I did discover uh, now today as well. Is because I was asking the question, oh, so when does when does the tax, the property tax, become payable? So I've now discovered that it's 30, within 30 days after the notary process. 30 days after. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. the, the time limit. So so I'm going to have to pay another, if you like, 13200 yep. um, in tax 30 days after we've finished the, the signing off in the notary. Mm, well, so that go. was quite interesting to know. You can't mm. avoid those taxes. So, uh, well, it looks uh, like it looks like uh, congratulations are in order. Well, we'll see. I mean, I mean, as I say, that that this private contract is going back and forth at the moment between uh, the two parties. Yep. I hopefully will see it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, obviously, I'll, it's all in Spanish. I'm going to have to translate it first and make sure I'm happy with everything. Uh, obviously, yes. Signing on the dotted line on Friday yep. would be a big moment. I mean, yep. I've never bought a place in my entire life. So this is quite so it's a, a new you know, experience in Spain oh, yeah. and in your life. Yes, absolutely. So hopefully for those, I mean, you know, regardless of anything else, hopefully those people that are really keen to know how the process is going yep. in terms of the Spanish way of doing things, in particular when it involves mortgage, yep. right? So I'll give an update perhaps in the next video of which direction I've taken with the mortgage yeah, good, finally. Good, good. That's yeah, and um, see how that goes. Yeah. Now, one of the things that popped up in that uh, mm. um, controversial comment section, Nick, mm -hmm. was uh, your Spanish language ability. Now, okay. you said, uh, I take it that you do speak Spanish, right? But when it, when it comes to dealing with these mm -hmm. um, complex contracts and things like that, it's not easy, is it? No, no. I mean, okay, look, Stuart, let's, let's be real here. On a daily basis, you are interacting with Spanish people. It's All part of your work. You're, te you're, you're teaching English to Spanish people, right? So, yeah. I mean, you're interacting with Spanish. Okay, I interact with Spanish people, for example, if, if I'm going out to the cafes. Or with, you know, and let's be clear, I make a point of going to Spanish cafes, not yeah. English cafes, right? Um, so, obviously, I mean, a couple of co people mentioned my pronunciation. Yeah, it's not going to be quite as exact as somebody like yourself who's actually studied the language properly. Um, I mean, I've never had a Spanish lesson, but my conversational Spanish is good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Where well, I fall down is accounting, medical, yeah. financial. So this is this is what yeah. I'm trying to get to, right? So, yeah. so when it comes to dealing with the banks and when it comes yeah. to dealing with lawyers and real estate agents yeah. and all of those things, mm. is it better to get somebody who – is bilingual in the topic or do you rely on somebody uh, purely Spanish and you sort of try to get through it that way? I mean, how do you deal with those things? Well, my my personal way, and again, it's not necessarily the way for everybody. And, and, because and, I, and just, before you, just before you start, I'm just going to put it out there that I would also have trouble with these contracts. I mean, yes. these, are, these are complicated legal Correct. documents, right? Yeah. Okay, here's how I've, I've been operating with both, uh, in particular the agents, okay? Um Daniel, who is the coordinator, and I'm going to give a, I must give a shout out to Sunset Remax, by the way. They have been apps, look it up on the internet, people. They are fantastic. Well, I've spoken to five or six different agents and they're absolutely useless. Sunset have gone over the top in terms of their work to help me find this place and help me along, especially being a first time buyer. Sunset Remax. Now, Daniel, the coordinator in the office, who was doing all the searching for me, together with Sandra, who is the 
um, one of the associate agents. Both of them speak decent English. However, I made a point with them up front and I said, look, can we speak a mix, a mix here as we go along? Yeah. Right. So in normal interactions, I will speak to them in Spanish. Mm. But if they're talking about something specific, as in any legal issues or, or, or issues revolving perhaps around, you know, this is the way to actually do things in, in particular, perhaps then we, we switch to a little bit of English, you know, just so that I get the exact understanding. Because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, conversational Spanish is one thing, understanding le legal stuff and making sure you don't trip up. That's a different ball game, isn't well, it? Well, this is this is the this is the this is the thing, right? So when it comes to, and I, I suppose that's the most daunting aspect for a lot of people when they think about buying property in a country like Spain or Portugal or whatever, is dealing with the contract side of things where the language can get complicated, and if you're not understanding every single uh, clause in a contract, you can get um, you can uh, have some problems. Yeah. I mean, look with modern technology, Stuart. Right, you know they're gonna they're gonna email me this uh, contract yeah. in advance. Now, of course, I can then copy and paste it into. I can either use Microsoft, Google Translators, whichever. There's a whole variety of stuff there, and together with my basic, well, not basic, decent knowledge of Spanish, between the two, I, I will have a good understanding of what's out. going okay. on. Yes, exactly. I'll get there. Yeah, okay, yeah. without needing any additional yeah, yeah, help. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in terms of people who maybe don't speak any Spanish, well. Obviously, in that situation, there's only one piece of advice we can give, isn't there? And that's to find an agency or, or a lawyer who's going to help you yeah. who actually does speak good English. There's no way around it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, you know, you and I both are the same boat here. If you want to live in Spain in the long haul, then clearly your life will be improved if you learn Spanish. Well, it's a no-brainer, well, isn't it? I mean, Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, for me, it's never been an issue. But I can understand yeah. that people that do go to – um, big uh, foreign resident enclaves, let's say, whether it is in mm. Malaga or whether it is in Alicante, there on the Costa Blanca, that you can fall into the trap of moving in your in your circles. And yeah. um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, people come no. to Spain for different reasons. Nothing wrong with that. But if yeah. you want to, so but if you do have these problems, I mean, I remember when I first came to Spain, Nick, uh, I didn't speak a word of Spanish, and I was in a place. I was, you know, nervous going to a going to a place where I knew that I was going it? to be... Sorry? How did you learn it? Did you actually well, go to Spanish lessons or did you no, just no, pick well, it up? I'm talking like about the first time I ever came to Spain, just on holiday, you know. So, right. I mean, I, I, I was in a place where nobody spoke English at all, basically, if you went to a supermarket. And I was a little bit apprehensive even just going to buy things, thinking about hmm. somebody asking me a question that I wasn't able to reply to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then it became a challenge to, to learn the language. So I, you yeah, know, but it's I, a great I, challenge, isn't it? It, as it well. is, of course. You know is, something? The people here, you know, okay, I've been here 14 years and they absolutely love it mm. when you're speaking to them in Spanish. Okay, I have an accent. My pronunciation is not perfect. Of course, but everybody has an accent. They, under they understand me. I understand them. We're speaking in Spanish and they have such respect for it. Of you course. know, at the end of the day, for, 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 for somebody from another country to come to your country and demonstrate their willingness to integrate entirely with that country, yeah. you know, the people, the language, people have such respect for that. That's what I've noticed. That's true. I mean, everybody has a, a, an accent. I mean, you've got an accent when you speak English. <laughs> I've got an, I've got a different accent to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, so uh, everybody's got an accent, but some are more pronounced accents than others, let's say, right? But yeah. Uh, yeah, it is an interesting process, and I'm sure that you'll keep us up to date. Now, another thing that you wanted to talk about, and I don't know how. Mm. Uh, deeply want to go you, deeply you want to go into the topic but you had some mm. accountancy issues recently oh yes okay you've asked the dreaded question right um okay this all kicked off last year um so in fact before i talk about last year now look is it stupidity on my part or naivety whatever i don't know uh, let people make their own judgments. Um, when I got my job with the, the, the cargo handling software provider that I've been with now for four years, and when I became autonomous, <clears throat> obviously all of that was done with this accountant that I discovered. Okay. Um, now the accountant was actually recommended to me by somebody 
albeit this person was in a completely different type of work to me. Actually, he owned a cafe. Um, and he, his accountant uh, was based here in Los Beliches. And um, he recommended them to me. But, you know, I, had, I didn't really know where to go. And, and doing the so, research. So, so, what, yeah. so what, ty- what type of company are you talking about in Spain? Are you talking about a gestoria or contable? What, what are you talking about? Well, I think they, they define themselves as assessoria. Assessoria. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in my definition, they are supposed to be your classic tax advisor and accountant. All right. Okay. And I say that because on the basis that I was becoming autonomo and, I, you know, look, at the end of the day, Stuart, how much do you know about taxation in Spain and all the little intricacies and all that? You, you, you pay an accountant at the end of the day yep. to help manage your affairs, right? Well, in I've other words… Paying, I've been paying the same guy for the last 20 years. Right. There you go. And, and, and in theory, your accountant – has got your interests at heart. Your accountant is not operating on behalf of the state. They're operating on your behalf. Absolutely. You are the client. You are paying that accountant money. Okay? Now, every month. Well, I, I was paying every three months 90 euros. So let's call that 30 a month. Now, okay, to begin with, I thought, well, that sounds pretty good. But there's an old expression. Didn't realize it at the time. Yeah. You get what you pay for. <laughs> All right? And I've had the distinct impression over the course of four years that I'm such a small client that I'm actually a hindrance. I'm, I'm what's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I'm interrupting their day if I make a call, right? Okay. And I so, have so, to feel so, that way. so it's not in their interest to have a client like you. It's, that's the impression I get or had sometimes. Yes, um, I was small fry, which I think's wrong. Right. I, I, I shouldn't, you know, a client is a client. Agreed. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the idea. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much you're paying. <clears throat> um, so now why do I say all that? Since I started this job, you know, I've just always had this suspicion that and asking the question, I seem to be paying a lot of tax. Why? It seems to be rather heavy. You know, can't my, can, you know, and many times I've called, I've called her up and said, I'm pay- I seem to be paying a lot because really there's not much in the way of expenses. So it's, I've been, I was asking so many times, I was saying to her, what can I claim? This is so difficult. Hmm. Now, I printed this off. This, this will startle you. And, and everybody out there, if you're going to be in the business of being autonomo, and in particular, if your work is going to involve travel, whether it's in Spain, within Spain, or international, okay? There was a law that came, a new regulation, sorry, that came out in 2018, the beginning of 2018. My accountant never told me about this at any stage between then and what, two months ago. So you are allowed now a daily food allowance. Okay. So if it's within Spain, it's 26 euros, 67 per day. If it's an overnight stay within the country, 48 euros a night. Just food. Forget the the cost of the hotel or whatever. International, fifty three per day or ninety one if it if it's an overnight stay. Now, Stuart, in between the beginning of twenty eighteen and my last trip just before COVID lockdown, which yep. was the first week of March last year, I had made in a total of thirty five international trips on yeah, so average th- four or five days. Yeah. So this is what they call in Spanish dietas. Yes. She never told me. I asked her about what can I do? The only thing she ever said to me, said to me was, well, you know, if you're going to buy something, you need to get an actual invoice. Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, look, if I, if I've gone to, to the office in the UK, I've got my week over there or, or they've sent me off, you know, other places. Now, look, I'm going to go into a cafe perhaps at, at, at the middle of the day and have a sandwich and a coffee or whatever. Okay. I don't, I'm not going to get an invoice in this little tiny cafe yeah, in okay. some little town, right? So the, the, the point I'm making is 35 trips, an average four or five days per trip, I believe I've overpaid in tax in the region of 3,000 euros. Now, again, is that stupidity or naivety or is it actually dereliction of duty of care 
in, in terms of the accountant. She never said a word about this daily food allowance. Well, that's what that's what in theory those thirty euros a month that you pay that that's that's exactly. what she has to work out, right? Yeah. So yeah. so she should also be telling you that even if you, um, you know, your daily expenses, if you take a taxi to your home to Malaga Airport, that's a deductible expense. Yeah. Uh, if you if you have to hire a car to go to uh, Madrid on business to catch a plane. It's also a it's also a tax deduct. Now, it's also she, a tax the, deduct. Uh, she only said to me ever was, you need to have an official invoice with your with your uh, NIE number on it, and she didn't deviate from that not once. Now of course, <laughs> I mean it's just madness. I mean the other thing is, um, health insurance, private health insurance, um, Spanish health well, insurance that, that, premiums well, up to a maximum of five hundred. Go on. Yeah, well, I was yeah. going to say that that's also a, a, a tax. But deduction. I never knew that. Yeah. I've had this job for four years, and it's never been deducted as as an expense, and therefore being tax deductible. Stuart, it's horrific. That so, the, the daily food allowance for the international travel. Yeah. Uh, I reckon about three thousand in taxation that I've paid that I didn't have to. The health insurance, I reckon I've paid again on their, what, 1500 that I just didn't need to pay because, you know, I, I, I've got it, but my accountant never advised me accordingly. You know, it's not as if I get an invoice from the bank. My health insurance is through Kaiser Bank. It's a Deslas. So well, all I see is the receipt. Well, you've, right? got, you've got also <laughs> part of your electricity bill uh, can be classified yeah, never, as a tax never, deduction. Never been able to do that. Internet, connect, internet connection. You work, you're working from no. home there. Correct. Yeah, I've never been able to give her my my. Uh, well, I'm with. I've got a my line is with Orange. Yeah, she never get. Yeah, just honestly, uh, uh, the message I'm trying to get across here is <sighs> this particular individual basically had no time for me. She didn't want to know. She was not interested in helping. The money that I was paying to their company, in her mind, obviously was completely irrelevant okay uh, uh, she just and she doesn't have that mindset of customer service it, it yeah. doesn't enter into her head as a matter of interest two months ago finally i made the switch now the company i'm with now i'm actually paying double the amount it's i'm paying 60 per month okay? you're getting better service and, though oh Stuart, the the first day i got into this um, company i'll mention the name because they are very good they're called afimar they're based in the in the in the center of Frankerola, and immediately um, the lady's right. Let let me go in, uh, online here and check everything. And immediately she she discovered that my uh, my address was not consistent across all of the organisations. She yes. fixed it there and then. Well, she's got go. to grips with my whole status. She's given me. She's even given to the point where now as well for taxation, um, she's given me like a spreadsheet that I can. So when I do all these international trips, and my first one is coming up in. November again, yep. and there's going to be a specific way that I can organize it. I mean, she's on the ball, right? She wants to help. She understands it's her job to uh, advise me, um, and what a difference already. Well, That's just again, again, if we use a saying, uh, Nick, you, you pay peanuts, you get yeah. monkeys. <laughs> well, <laughs> mine was an orangutan. <laughs> there you go. That's what you go. I had, yeah. Um, oh, now, right. to make matters worse, of course, um, the whole accounting issue then also manifested itself in what I went through next, which was the whole issue of dealing with um, tax itself and the payment of taxes and right. the agencia well, tributaria. Or do you want to leave that till the next session? Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that to the next session yeah, because okay. we've, we've, we've gone on for <laughs> a while ready. today. Yeah, we talk a lot, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we do. Oh, well, uh, Let's uh, just finish off by saying that the fires down there in Malaga have been put out, right? Well, as of this morning, apparently they, they weren't 100% out, but the definition was because of the deluge of rain we had yesterday that they are now under control. Okay. All right. That's good right? news. So, so that's really, really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, unfortunately, of course, as you know, one firefighter tragically lost his life, which is very sad. Um, and thousands of animals have also suffered. Mm. And then, of course, you've got uh, all the people that have been that had to evacuate yep. for for that period of time. So, um, 
yeah, it's been quite um, horrific. But I do want to give a quick little shout out to, you know, me, my aviation, uh, um, love of aviation. These seaplanes, they are CL415s and they, the squadron is based in Sevilla. Okay. And obviously when these fires happen down here, they will, they will travel down here first. I assume they base themselves at Malaga temporarily, or, or there might be another airfield, the other side of Marbella. I'm not sure. But I was thinking about, about them. And look, I lived in South Africa some time ago, and I learned to fly. I did about 14, 15 hours worth of flying lessons. One of the lessons is flying straight and level, okay? Just keeping the plane in a straight line. I was in a small Cessna flying at what? Between three and 4,000 feet. Not particularly high, but high enough that when the wind had an effect or turbulence had an effect on the, the aircraft, I had plenty of time to make the adjustments, Last year, when there were some fires up in Mikas Hills behind me, these planes, there were two of them, they were doing their, their water collection runs right in the sea uh, off, off where I live here. I could yep. see them, and I was watching them. And, I want, I, and I, the skill and courage that these guys have is extraordinary. I want you to think about this. Here's the sea. They're coming in. They're, so firstly, they have to fly straight and level. They're only three or four feet above the sea, and you're going trying to go in a straight line, and then they lift the nose up so that the towards the rear of the aircraft is the scoop to collect the water. Now, if anybody out there's fallen off a jet ski or one of those crazy bananas that they they uh, uh, you know it's like you're hitting a brick wall when you hit the sea. Yeah, absolutely. So imagine a, a pilot he's trying to fly s- straight and level with the nose of the aircraft up. And now the scoop hits the water to start collecting. So you've got that initial hit. So he's got to adjust the power at the precise moment to keep the aircraft going. Mm. And now as he continues going along that collection run, the water is going into the aircraft. It's now increasing the weight of the aircraft. Power to weight ratio now kicks in. So he's having to adjust the power to maintain the straight and level effectively with the bottom of the aircraft in the sea. All right. As the weight continues to increase, it's extraordinary, Stuart, what they do. Then it goes to the fire. Mm. Right now, I'm sure people out there have seen some photos of this fire. I mean, it was a, it, it's well, it's just a rage. It's like Dante's Inferno, wasn't it? I mean, it's incredible. And well, these pilots, go on. No, I was going to say that one of these pilots said the day mm. that he 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 lived he, he lifted something like a million liters of water. Yeah, well, well, they collect five and a half thousand liters of water every time they do this collection run in the sea. So, and and, now they're doing circuits. Can you imagine? Not only do you have to have the skill and the courage, but you're doing it for hour after hour after hour Mm. because you're desperate to try and put this fire out. Mm. I mean, it's incredible what they do. When you get to the fire itself, don't forget now, if you look at the photos that there are out there, these fires were predominantly in the hills. Okay, in in the Sierra there. And um, so you're having to contend with the winds coming off the top of the hills and affecting the flow of the aircraft. You've also got the thermals that you get because it's summer. And now add to that these flames. Okay, and these pilots are trying to go in not too high because the water is just going to disperse and not have the effect. They've got to go in low enough, but effectively without crashing because of all these 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 factors that can affect them. It's extraordinary yeah. what they do. Well, really. one, of the prob- one of the problems I read was that the water was evaporating before it even hit the fire. And yeah. um, and now, well, earlier today I read, or even yesterday, they said that they were deliberately lit. So we're talking... Um, yeah, I've heard arson as being the word yeah, mentioned. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, I think uh, Miss, our friend, Mr. Sanchez, the... The, the prime minister, he's, he's – I was reading an article today actually about you know, he wants to introduce it as a law. He's, mm. he's, he's, he's wanting to say, well, look, if you do something that starts a fire like this, we're going to have to treat it as arson and therefore you know, you're going to be subject to the normal sort of penalties, if you like. Well, that and, if some, might and, if some, and if somebody dies, manslaughter. Well, well yeah. I, I think it's right, you know. People Maybe. have to take care. You know, you know what it's like, Stuart. July, August in Spain. It, it, you know, I, I'm, not so, I'm not so familiar with the north, obviously, the green area mm. above there um, in Galicia and places like that. But 
you know, by the time you're talking Madrid downwards, yeah. right, into, dry. into the, the dry, you know, you get into July and August, the land is parched. The slight, somebody just dropping a cigarette can start off one of these fires. Which unfortunately you know? people still do. They don't yes. know. All right, Nick, we'll start to wrap it up. Another interesting chat. We'll be in contact and we'll we'll keep on with the story about the um, the tax issues next time. Yes, yes. <laughs> and a few <laughs> other things that have caught our attention uh, over the week, okay? Absolutely. Okay, then. All cool. right, Nick, good one. Have a good one. Right. See you later. You too. See bye, you. Bye, bye, Cheers. Bye. bye.